Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 72 of Scion of the Dark House, a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition gothic horror podcast. Because it is gothic horror, there may be some things that might come up to a line for some people, such as blood, gore, violence, talk of abuse and trauma, body horror, and other such things. So if there is something that comes up to a line for you, please take a break. Your support means a lot to us, but so does your mental health. So when we last left off, the party had begun to head home from morning, passing through Broken Heart and heading into the woods where they encountered a dark cloud. Within the storming cloud, they saw a silhouette of a great castle that began to crumble. They felt the ground shake and went to investigate, finding a giant sarcophagus as well as other parts of the castle had fallen down. Draped over the sarcophagus was the ghost of a cloud giant, which didn't take too kindly to them treading close to the sarcophagus. It attacked, and the group managed to dispatch of it pretty quickly. They removed the lid to find that it was indeed a skeleton of a cloud giant, clutching a pearl staff. Attempting to get the pearl staff out, it broke. They mended it together and stuck it in the bag of holding, and they slept on the cart after taking the giant's skull. Mostly that was Lark. <laughs> the next morning, they all woke up. Arthur spotted a strange red leaf on Percy's shoulder, which he took off, and it transformed into an adorable little elemental spirit known as a Tringa. It turns out there were two more in the cart, and as they made their way back to Graves' End, the group of elemental spirits used various objects as a playground. As a reward for entertaining them for a brief period of time, they gave Arthur a charm of heroism. It was the evening and they decided to stop at the Nail and Headstone, where Lark decided to have a little pep talk with Percy, casting suggestion on him to give him a little courage to talk to the grave digger that he had been interested in. After some conversation and dinner, things went to their natural conclusion, and that is where the end of the episode happened. So, as you all complete your undisturbed long rest, Percy, if you'd like to give me your traditional post-coital um, constitution check, please do. <laughs> all right. Dang, I did good. That's a 22. Ooh. So, yes, it was, it was very, very good. Um, <laughs> and we Excellent. begin the morning with you all regrouping downstairs, unless any of you have something really specific that you want to role play. I think we're good. All right. So you all regroup in the lobby of the nail and headstone and prepare to head back. So what would you like to do specifically? Um, I guess we, we all meet up and this is probably the first time in a long time Lark and Percy haven't slept in the same room together. Um, oh, I 100% tried going in the room in the middle <laughs> yeah. but somebody probably stopped me. Yeah, yeah. that sounds Yeah, because like part of Lark's history is he spent a couple years hanging out in a different sort of fairy court where uh the prince of parties would one of the kinds of parties they threw were orgies so he's like there's nothing wrong with sleeping next to a fucking couple it's fine <laughs> but i feel like somebody probably stopped him because percy would have probably screamed probably um but yeah per percy just kind of comes down trying to look as dignified as possible um but Failing miserably. Yeah, probably. Uh, I'll roll a deception check. <laughs> I got he a, comes limping down the stairs. Nine. <laughs> he comes um, limping down the stairs. His clothes are all rumpled up. <laughs> also, 
I, I think there's probably a small look of confusion on his face as he's not entirely sure why he was so forward last night. Um, but he, he's he's in a good mood. He's, uh, hey guys, uh, should we hit the road? Somebody had fun last night. Alex nice. says while he just like drinks his coffee, being like, just giving uh, a side eye, being like, "Oh, you're walking <laughs> funny. Somebody fought him." I am not walking. You know, um, mm-hmm. he was walking a straight line. A gentleman. It was. Uh, we had a good time. It was. Mm. We 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 talked a lot. Ah, uh, jazz <laughs> was leaking. <laughs> You were talking Talk so loudly, I could hear you three doors down in Arthur's room. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Percy hot. definitely Good blushes. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome, by the way. It sounded like you Bro. were praying. What do you mean, you're welcome? So many I'm... mentions of gods. <laughs> oh, I uh, don't think worry about we should it, probably just pack up and we don't need to get into that. Was it found? <laughs> Yeah, with the super existing film technology that we all have. (laughs) I mean, I'm just thinking like projection, like for only you could you could make bank off of only wizards coming through. (laughs) I'm sure. Goodness, only wizards. Make sure you learn minor illusion or something. Only wizards and then others as well, (laughs) all inclusive. (laughs) Yeah, so it is probably about nine o'clock in the morning when you all pile back into the cart and begin to head off again. Wait, are we still carrying the skull thing? Yes, you are. It's my new That's bed. Flash back. Okay. <laughs> that thing is gross, okay? And soon it will be beyond. How big is it? <laughs> Wait, did we clean it? I hate you. No, you guys <laughs> did not so clean much. it. How I've... big is it? I have pressed it. It's the it's a giant skull, so Lark's gonna probably use it as a bed and then take his bedding out and fill it with water to bathe at times. Is it like this big? I think it's we decided huge. it was about like maybe I think a hundred and fifty pounds or so. So mm, however big yeah, that would be. Like that. Yeah. Oh. It's just so sitting it's in the definitely cart. person size, yeah. Mm. <sighs> And Lark's only like three feet, if that. So but it, that's a lap pool, not just a bathtub. That's a lap pool. <laughs> Do a backflip. Uh-huh. I mean, nobody would let me take the rib cage. So <sighs> that is true. Yeah, not um, let take the, the rib cage. So where are we off to? There, there are lines. There, there are lines. Are there? And those lines are us <laughs> not carrying a like ton of just a, a literal ton of, of ribs around with us. Yeah, this has nothing to do with the desecration of a corpse. It has to do with why are we carrying this gigantic thing around? It's super inconvenient and it's gross. Because of it would make a good boudoir, the ambiance. <laughs> I'm with Lark on this for, one. For oh my god. Okay. Um well and then you guys can come back at a later time oh. and come grab it. I'll with you know what? I'll drive. Dainty Bye. little bodies. The next, the next, the next spin off. <laughs> the next one. <laughs> the next one shot. <laughs> yeah. So that you all head girl. off in the cart back to short drop run. You all begin to pull into the crossroads, probably a little bit later in the evening, about eight o'clock, as you all head back towards the Maggoty Grave, the only inn in the area. Would you like to stop there for the night? I suppose we Uh, shall. All right. So it's 9 a.m. Yeah, how long did it take us to get from where we were to here? It takes about a day. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, damn, we, we like were, left early. Yeah, we we were like all the way up north. Uh, kind of a northeast or so. Northeast. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was trying to remember the map. Yeah, my, morning yeah. is about east of Darkmoor, so it okay. kind of takes a, a sort of winding route a little bit because the towns aren't perfectly in line. So right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose we'll rest for the evening. 
So you head Mark in. Mark can sleep in his skull. <laughs> yeah, you do get some confused looks as you pull into town with this gigantic skull just sitting there in the cart. That's like I'm an iconic. Sure. That's an iconic shot. <laughs> It certainly shot. is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to carry it in. into the room with me and just set it like a toddler bed in the corner. Ew. Uh, the rooms are definitely not big enough to fit that skull. It's like 100 I think pounds. You're going to have to sleep outside here. It's, it's a pretty big wise. skull. If it's like 100 pounds, like a large dog is around 100 pounds. I don't know what else, you know. So like, I don't know, say la vie. I'll just leave it in the car. Daddy Dungeon Master says it can't go in, so it doesn't go in. It's it's pretty big. <laughs> Skulls don't actually have a lot of filled space. So yeah, it's a hundred pounds, but it's also really big. Not the only pretty big thing that tried getting in Percy's bed chambers in recent nights. Oh my God. Hey, hey, and ah, we're still doing it. Thank oh. you, Alex. <laughs> so as you head inside, you see um, oh Boris is still dishing up soup to some of the people that are staying up a little later. And as <sighs> you come through the door, he looks up. Oh, oh, hello. How are you all? I see you are oh, back. Oh, no. Oh, wait. This is the, I'm just gonna look over towards Alex and be like, "In the world for this, why didn't you kill him yet?" Wait, wait, what? Did I we fuck him? him? Wait, was <laughs> yes, Boris the one that was a werebear? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh hell! Oh, that's why you're saying why didn't you kill? Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Why was I supposed to kill him again? You don't kill your one night stands in the mortal plane. No. Yeah, that's Not where I thought he was going. Yeah. Oh, praying mantis style. Oh, I got confused. I mean, the dick was so good. I'm going to keep him around for tonight. <laughs> Why would I kill a good dick? Mm, okay. uh, dessert, I guess. Mm. Fair. I, yeah. Anyway, since um, I see him, I'm like, hey. <laughs> gives you a nod. I'm so going to go to bed. I don't need to be here for this. Rooms for yep. the night. Yep. Thank we you. We certainly Please. have space. Yep. Um, that'll be about a gold for all of the rooms, assuming you're dividing yourselves up like last time, relatively. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So he gives you the keys to your rooms. Is there feel anything to... else that you would like to do? I'll yeah. just say this. Of the, Alex just says, feel free to stop on by later tonight if you want to have round two. <laughs> Sorry, wink and then like, like <coughs> hey. Winking he kind of nods and just says, "So he's getting I'll his own room." About it. This is this is the part where Alex gets ghosted in real life, <laughs> literally. And now, <laughs> Boris just says, uh, "Beautiful." I'll think about it, and then heads back to start to keep serving beer and soup and things like that. So and then anything... I look to Lark and be like, you do not tell him that I forgot his name and that we slept together, I swear to God. <laughs> Why do you need to know someone's name to sleep with them? I mean, that's a good point. Oh, how do we know his name? Did he introduce himself? I don't know. Yes, Whatever. he did. Yeah, you, you guys go. have that's been to this establishment several times. <laughs> so, yeah. This is the, hey, nice to meet you. We literally slept together happening <laughs> in the game. And I think all of us express like attraction towards this Doris person. Oh yeah, all of you went, ooh, daddy, in the first episode. <laughs> all of you. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> yeah. As a player, maybe. As a character, <laughs> no. Arthur's <Nah>. homophobic. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur's out here being homophobia. Oh, yeah. Half of our party. Arthur has is... a crush on a weird half elf in a wheelchair. <laughs> Still homophobic. That's his favorite gender identity. <laughs> half elf in a wheelchair. Is half elf wheelchair lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so is there anything that you would like to do before you all head and have a long rest? I'm good. Nope. Just food, drink, bed. 
Mm. Well, the last time we slept here, Samantha decided to attack, so everyone keep that in mind. Fair. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. And I'm just saying. Of, uh, She's so yeah. droll, she might try it again. <sighs> bum, bum, you know what? I don't have words. Yeah. So I'm guessing we all ate, we got a bad let. Yeah. Of- yep. Real interesting. Yeah. So Alex gets his hole punched, presumably. <laughs> well, I don't know. Does he come up? Does he not? I don't really want to spend the time rolling a dice to see if I got laid or not. Then why don't you roll a die? <laughs> I said I don't really want to spend the time to. <laughs> Just do it once. So I will let you decide. Um, he clearly is not opposed. I will say he's not opposed. If you head over to his room. I invite him to mine. I'm a lazy top tonight. They can come to me. She don't travel. She don't travel. She hosts. <laughs> she hosts him tonight. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to choose. I'm going to I'm gonna roll a 20. If it's above 15, Alex got his hole punched. Or actually, I punched some holes. She versed. Anyways, she's Either in her way. top uh, era. Taylor Swift came out with a new album. She's in her top era. Um, if it's below, then no sex. Oh it was a one. Oh, <laughs> oh damn. Damn. He so winds up in someone else's room. Fucking man. Oh, no <laughs> head. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first but you open the door. You wait <laughs> until like 11 o'clock. And then you open the door and you see. That should have been some type of damage. Edge, and you um see his door shut and you hear him snoring very loudly. Oh, God. And you just shut the door and continue with your long rest. <laughs> I, that one, should one have been damage. You forgot. That you should forgot. Have been you forgot. Damage. Lazy top. Bitch, I was asleep. I fell asleep before he even came in. I didn't even know I passed oh the fuck out. Lazy top era. <laughs> be. Tops don't wait around for their bottoms. Ask anyone on Grinder. Oh. Okay. Anyway. And yes, that is Tops <laughs> and all the Tops here. Uh-huh. So you all wake up in the morning, have your breakfast, and head off once again. And you are heading to the town of Gallows. Once again, it's pretty uneventful. You head back into Gallows and you pull up to the busted casket once again. And presumably you spend another gold. Yep. Yep. You sleep the night. Unless there's anything somebody wants to do, we'll just skip to the next morning as you head back towards morning. Alex makes a joke of being like, ah, yes, Gallows, where all the men are hung. Oh, Ah, come on. Good old Gallows humor. Technically, a person is hanged. A picture is hung. Oh, shit. Is that true? Coming in clutch with Mm -hmm. the grammar. That is actually true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. (laughs) The joke still stands. (laughs) The joke still stands. And the, Alex and Percy do have that conversation as we yeah. walk through. <laughs> <laughs> as you all are packing, getting all of your stuff and putting it in your rooms and dividing, you know, the rooms up, you have that little exchange. But yeah, the night goes by entirely uneventfully and you head back towards morning, n- not towards morning, uh, towards dark more in the morning. Um, it doesn't take as long. So you pull into the city probably around five or six o'clock in the evening. Um, And the city is beginning to wind down before the explosion of nightlife uh, that is the main street of the upper city. So is there anything that you all would like to do? Um, Where, wait, where did we just make it to? I'm sorry. Darkmoor. Darkmoor. Oh. oh, we made it. We did make cool. it back to Darkmoor. We yep. home. And we're what time of day now? It's like, I'm going to, let's just say it's about 5.30 in the evening. Uh, so it's late. Okay. So. Um, are businesses still open? Yeah, there's a few businesses that are still open. Who said 5 p.m. was late? 
Um, mm. What about like the God, I can't remember the, the Dragon's Horde. Or what am I remembering the name of the, the item? The magic copper item cauldron. Shop. The copper oh, cauldron. Yeah. That one. The copper we left. We left our beholder it's bits there. Also, can right. I sell we left my our um, what? Can I sell my pearl beads? Whatever. To your pearl staff. Mm-hmm. Yes. Can you sell your anal beads. Oh yes. My anal beads. Oh my god. They aren't beads. It's just a regular 18 foot staff, you know, for the size. Those are queen. Alex's, and she doesn't <laughs> want to sell them. <laughs> oh, it's hers. I thought it was mine. <laughs> no, 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 we're no. selling the them. We can just divvy up the gold. Okay, never, never mind. <laughs> you can just break them into apart, and everyone I, gets their I, own. I, 18 feet divided by six people? That's what. Ooh, or I could have a set of pearl veneers made. Totally not. That's definitely above game. Totally not in character. <laughs> but I do love that idea. All right, well, why don't we see if our beholder trinkets are ready? <laughs> sure. So you head into the copper cauldron. The familiar ding, ding, ding as the door opens. Um, you see that... The shop has the definitely moved. sucks so much. Uh oh, that's not good. Well, we'll see if you can hold out for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so you head into the Copper Cauldron to find that it has switched gears a little bit. It has once again begun to sell more um, school oriented things, training wands, basic spell books, things of that nature. There aren't as many sort of magical items that are for sale, but the familiar golden dragonborn, Goran Guy Garrix, is there working the till and there's definitely significantly less traffic. Um, as he is uh, in the process of at the moment, checking out a, a person, taking their gold as they pack up a bunch of textbooks into their bag and begin to head off. Uh, cool. Ooh, Wait till he's I don't. Done. I don't remember what we're picking up. Our beholder bits. Yeah, we left beholder things and also the eyes of an umber hulk. Oh yeah, yes. that. Oh, yeah. was I here um, for the drop off of that? I remember. I remember doing the umber hulk. I think you missed the actual drop off when we dropped off all the pieces. Okay. He's supposed right, to that make makes us some cool then. shit. Cool. So yeah, he finishes up and he turns. Oh, hello. How are you all doing? We're all right. We thought we'd just check on the well, whatever we left with you and whatever you managed to cook up with it. Yes, I've been having quite a bit of trouble with the beholder bits. They are uh, a bit strange. However, and he pulls out... Um, I believe it was you had four small eyes that you managed to pull off of the Umber Hulk as well as the big one, the two big ones. That sounds right. Yes. So he pulls out three tiny bags. Now, I managed to dry out the smaller Umber Hulk eyes and grind them into a powder um, and used a bit of the magic to create a um, sort of confusion powder. You simply throw the powder into the face of a creature you wish to confuse, and it's very similar to the confusion spell, Um, but they are only one use. Uh, It was the best that I could do with the parts. The eyes were beginning to rot and decay, and they were very hard to preserve. Um, So this was the best that I could do with them. I have managed to... um, preserve one of the larger Umber Hulk eyes. I have lacquered it. And so it's almost like a uh, crystal ball of sorts, but it, I haven't been able to get any good enchantments to stick. Gotcha. No, that works perfectly. All right. Uh, so if you would like, I believe since these were... Um, quite potent uh, reagents. I would say that if you would like all three of them, I'll give them to you for 50 gold. And then you can have all three. I I won't. 
you guys take them if you want them. I was pretty useless <laughs> in taking that thing down. Um, Killed so it. it's just sort of a regular crystal ball and some confusion dust? No, it is only the confusion dust. He hasn't managed to get any yeah. enchantments to stick to the beholder eye crystal ball thing. Not beholder eye, cool. umber hulk eye crystal ball. Um, mm-hmm. So it's just the confusion powder. So yeah, I feel, like, I feel like the powder is good for uh, Arthur. Mm-hmm. It would okay. fit you well. I mean, if no one else wants it, then yeah, I, I'll, I'll take it. I just, you, I didn't want to claim dibs because like that, that thing gave me a pretty rough time. <laughs> what uses confusion for me if I can just blast them to bits? I mean, also same, but the yeah. divination was there. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I am well, a divination. I'll, I'll take the <laughs> yes. I'll take the confusion and dust. I'll what, take, what should well, I put yeah. it in? Now? So, um, just put it in as dust of confusion. It is. Okay. Um, I'll take one. basic just DC. Do you 15. want to call that sixteen gold, Kyle? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I'm sorry. Spencer, go ahead. It'll be an action to use. Yeah, Dust of Confusion. Action to use DC 15 saving throw against um, Confusion. I'll have to look up what exactly the saving throw is. I want to say it's Wisdom. Um, Or else they they come under the effect of Charisma. Bless you. Bless you. Compulsion. Commune, color spray, clone. Why can I not find it? Command, color spray. Compulsion, confusion. (laughs) Yep, it's a wisdom saving throw. Okay, DC 15 whiz or confusion spell effect. Yeah. And unlike the confusion spell that targets a bunch of creatures in an area, this is enough dust. It's it's a pretty hefty one handful of dust, creature. but it's only one creature. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, each creature. Oh, okay, so it's like roll on a table sort of thing. Yes. Yeah, so instead of targeting a 10-foot radius area, it's, it's just, just the one. It's just yeah. the one. Yeah, so it does have well, a range of nice. five feet. You do actually have to run up to the person or the creature and throw the dust at them, so it'll be a five foot range. Hmm, that's kind of chaotic. I sort of like it. What if you got them to snort the dust? Same thing. Still, yeah, just, I mean, that's kind of fun though, I guess. Okay, so, like so we have that. Um, was there anything else that we left here? Uh, I don't or think anything, anything else, else anyone ready? needs? I mean, we could go to the spa. <laughs> oh, that does sound lovely, doesn't it? We've been on the road for so long. I know I smell like the wrong end of a horse's ass. You always smell like the wrong end of a horse's ass, though. Well, at least I don't act like one. At least I don't look like one. <gasps> oh, bitch. Touche. All right, right, you win that one. Um, well, I might go check on Oscar in the hospital. Uh, why do you have to be so responsible? Remind me, Oscar is who now? My ancestor who should be long dead, but we found living uh, in a Morts. horrible beholder dimension. Yeah, yeah, um, pocket dimension, weird thing. Yep. Yes. Okay. Just sending spell your mom and come to the spa with us. <laughs> um, no, I think I'd like to see him. Oh, nice oh. hot soak. Oh, you, you all are welcome to go to the spa. Lady with the drugs. <laughs> see, here's what happens. We split off from you and you wind up getting kidnapped or something with our luck. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of Perhaps <laughs> I don't have a or like the that. hospital catches on fire, something blows up. Well, why we don't we go know. see our wonderful, wonderful ancestor, and then afterwards we go to the spa. 
Uh, Why don't we see him and bring him to the spa with us? That too. He uh, could probably use a spa trip. Yeah. If you remember, he yeah. is insane. Let's just <laughs> let's just mage oh, hand oh. the crazy guy all the way. Well, to... use your confusion dust, <clears throat> Madam. What's her name? What's her tits? Uh, Ludla. Ludla. Yeah, Madam Ludla. 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 <laughs> little, God, little, I might little, have to pull that sorry, voice out again. <laughs> I, just, I had to. I'm so glad someone knew what that was. Anyway, um, yeah, sure, fine. We can do whatever responsible adult things, human stuff, gay, whatever. Oh, Arthur is homophobic through and through. <laughs> <laughs> he just doesn't give a fuck. He's a homophobic virgin. Homophobic <laughs> virgin. It's true. He he is a virgin. Yeah. He's never had time. Fair. Alrighty, let's go see Insane O, oh, whatever the fuck his name is. I really should know Are my ancestors' dead? names, but I don't fucking care. Let's just go. Insane O. Insane Yeah, I think he's like a great, great something times uncle. Yeah. And obviously yeah, a that. big fan of ICP if he goes by Insane O. God damn it. Insane-o. It's like um why get to society today. Oh, okay, but juggalos are good people relatively, I think. Like they have a good what, the insane clown posse. Yeah, they're famous, Yeah, they're actually so, like, like they have a good, good people reputation. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking more in the disenchantment area of Insado <laughs> along with like never watched the Alpha show. and like all the other elves in that show. <laughs> Insado. What? Anyway, so you all yep. head to the hospital. <laughs> um, and yeah, you you make your way inside. Um, are you going straight up to the room or are you going to your mother's office or what are you doing? Uh, yeah, I guess I'll, if it's a time I think my mom would be in, I'd probably go see her first, yeah, I guess. She's, she generally works pretty late. Aren't we supposed to be visiting your ex and finding out what happened to the kid? Well, we can do that tomorrow. It's late. <laughs> a lot of visitings we can do. We just drove for forever. <laughs> and you don't want to gloat to him that you just got Blied? laid? No, no I, I don't. I Why that seems kind of immature. He doesn't want to face him. It's the first time Percy's had sex since the breakup. That would be very awkward. We should really, really, you know. So I knock on my mom's door. Or that I say be there and watching the she whole opens thing and then the door fun of him afterwards. Oh, um, hello. Uh, hey, I, I assume you had a safe trip in. Hey, Auntie. Mostly, um, it was fine. We learned some good things. I'll tell you later. I just uh, wanted to check in on Oscar, see if he's learned a lot of good things while we were changes. Yeah. A lot of good things happen while we're gone. Mm-hmm. Well, oh that's good God. to hear. Um, mm-hmm. We did just administer a, uh, a sedative to, to him. He uh, has had a few violent outbursts, but luckily we are getting a um, priest to come in and cast greater restoration on him tomorrow at some point. Hopefully that will take care of uh, the madness. And we can figure out if there's anything else that we need to do before um, figuring out how exactly we're going to deal with um, our living ancestor. But that'll be a can of worms for another time. Um, he, he is fast asleep. Um, gotcha. So, I mean, I don't know if you want to sit next to him for a little bit or just... Make sure he's okay, or... I'll go look at him, I guess. All right, well, fair enough. Um, Of course, I'll be working for maybe another hour or two. Um, So... All right, well, we'll probably see you at home then. She nods, and she then goes back to her work. Auntie. Uh, Yes? I said bye. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bye, auntie. <laughs> Bye. She gets back to her paperwork. Um, yeah, you head upstairs to the room that you remember him in. Um, 
there are definitely claw marks on the wall. Um, the bed is ever so slightly angled in another direction. So there's scuff marks on the floor of the bed has clearly been jostled around and moved, but he is laying down fast asleep, still in his restraints. Cool. The very familiar Oscar. I'll, I'll just sort of have like a, like a somber Grey's Anatomy moment, uh, staring over my God. my struggling relative, and and then we can collect ourselves and move on. Oh, I'm gonna fly right over to him while <laughs> that's happening. I'm just gonna sniff above his head, just to be like, what's, do, do what's, I dare even ask? What's, what are you doing? I'm just trying to see if there's the scent of any nightmares in the air. Oh, dear God. You know what? If you want to roll me, what, an arcana check? I don't know if this would even be a thing I'm actually capable of, but it's what my court feeds off of. Oh, that's only a three. (laughs) I mean, his hair smells a bit sweaty. They've clearly been cleaning him. Um, He is not covered in grime and dirt, but his hair smells a little sweaty. There's a little bit of a sort of lye soap smell um Mm. but otherwise it just smells like regular human hair nothing special gross i figured maybe it could be fun but oh well what exactly were you hoping for when you sniffed his head I mean, you figure the man's been living through a nightmare for the last however many centuries in a pocket dimension. The nightmares he uh-huh. have must be delectable. You were sniffing him to find out if he tasted good? Well, if I wanted to find out we're... if he tasted good, I would have licked him. Oh, dear. We're, we're I'm not cheating off his well nightmares being. Okay. yet. But... Okay. Uh, per- per- pers- Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I think I'm all set. We can, we can head out. Oh, thank God. Mm-hmm. So, where are you all heading now that you've left the to hospital? To the spa, and Madame Ludlow. <laughs> Let's go to spa. Uh, I agree. Sure. So I think <sighs> um, freaking spa day. Yeah. So I think Percy, you weren't there, and Alex, you definitely weren't there for the spa so you don't you do not recognize this place you you've probably passed by it a couple of times just traveling around the city um but you haven't actually been inside um however rarick lark and arthur definitely have been inside you all walk in and once again there are the changing rooms as well as the open pools and the various saunas and spa rooms in the back Um, it's definitely a little bit later. A lot of some of the services aren't available. Um, like there is not a massage service available, but there is still the pools. Um, I forget what- There's steam room? There are steam rooms. There is also the one that Ludla has taken over. What's Um, the one that's going to get me the most clean? The pools? Probably the pools. What's the one that's going to get me the most dirty? Uh, None of them. Somehow I knew you were going to say that. It's not that kind of spa. It's not that kind of spa. But yeah, so I think the services were like just a couple of silver a person. So once again, just one gold for all of you to kind of just have a couple of hours, maybe like two or three. Um. And of course, there is the room. Most of the steam rooms have been shut. There is the one that is still standing open a crack at the very, very back that has the very familiar ivy coming out of the door. That is um, the space where Ludla is. Oh, I'm going to go say hi to Ludla, I guess. So we're like walking up and it's so just a, some sort of bog witch that lives in the sauna. Oh, she's not a bog uh... witch, not nearly as fabulous. Well, we, we we all say as we're like wearing our towels, walking up to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of bog witchy. 
I guess. I don't know, but she she you obviously she didn't coach. spend nearly enough time around bog witches. If you think Ludla's a bog witch, well, I haven't seen Ludna or a bog witch, so no, I guess I haven't. Oh, Ludla, I'll call out in Sylvan first. Oh. Yep, and she she does respond in Sylvan. I believe she does speak Sylvan, um, from what I remember. Yeah. Oh my God, you're here? Oh, come on in. I the remember voice I was that. expecting. <laughs> yep. I forgot <laughs> what she's like when she talks. <laughs> oh, yes. Like, fair warning, there's some curse. 22 year old white college girl. That's basically kind of what she is. Yeah, <laughs> she's a yoga really? Becky. Like, yeah. she, she likes pumpkin spice lattes and her healing crystals. And she wears giant she ass freaking purple. scarves and boots. I love her. Shit. Oh, and that thing where you pull the sleeves of your sweater over your hands. She sounds like she would have a homophobic boyfriend. <laughs> totally. <clears throat> oh, she, she, doesn't believe, she doesn't believe in labels like that. that. I was about to say that, or she'd be like, she would be a lesbian who's like, she's, she's got a gender non binary life partner. She actually has two. <laughs> He's much more inclusive. He's so anyway, lovely. You, um, yeah. I'm assuming you open the door, and you, of course, see the very familiar Furbolg Druidess. Um, this room has been completely repurposed. There are potted plants hanging from the ceiling. There are potted plants all over the place. She has, oh um, just beautiful rugs and pillows all over the place. She has several vials and braziers of various things. Um, you also notice that she's definitely wearing a lot of loose flowy clothing. She definitely has a lot of beads and feathers in her hair. Um, and she's currently, just like last time, holding a eerily giant caterpillar like a baby and just kind of petting it. And oh. don't caterpillars eat plant? Never mind. <laughs> I bet they guys, you she feeds it through dust? her own mouth. <laughs> so <laughs> she's just sitting there and she, as you open the door, she waves. Oh my God, I never thought I'd see you. New friends. Oh hey girl. My. Hi. Yeah. Is she speaking in common or Sylvan? <clears throat> She's speaking in common now that you've opened the door and she sees there's other people. Oh my God, do you want another session? I just uh, want to go to a pool. Oh yeah. So These guys were pretty curious about what, yeah. what was going on. So. Oh, yeah, we can do another session. Oh, that would mm -hmm. be like so much fun. I love you. Oh my god, I love your plan. What's session? <laughs> what is she talking hey. about? It's, <laughs> Alex is just like Alex is just like entranced by all the flower, like all the plants. I was just like, girl, I love this. Oh my god, it's uh, it's basic, it's basic bitch recognizing basic bitch, and so just like, oh my god. All right, Why did go on, Bartholomew, and she drops Ooh. the caterpillar. <laughs> And it just kind of inches off kind of a little bit faster than you were expecting a caterpillar to like inch off into the plant life. Oh my God, come sit down. <laughs> oh my God. So you sit yeah. down. I'm just like, so you, you live here? No, I don't. I work here. Oh, okay. That, <laughs> that's, that's better actually. That's better for me. Think of me <laughs> as a spiritual massage therapist. Yes, queen. <laughs> Tell me more. Oh, huh. God. Ugh. Yep. Mm -hmm. In the back of his head, Lark's like, do I warn them or not? I'm not and he's just going to be like, I'm not going to warn them. Yeah, no, he definitely wouldn't. So. Oh, I was heading to the pool. She did, She almost doesn't just, she almost doesn't notice you just turn around and walk out. <laughs> hey, bye. Okay. So, we'll just do what we did last time. Uh -huh. And she takes out a hookah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and she kind of fills it 
with herbs and she, you know, kind of lights it up and it begins to, you know, smoke. And I remember last time I, uh, she was doing that, I went straight to the pool also. Yeah, you just completely <laughs> skipped yeah. this. Barrett skips all yeah. the drugs. <laughs> yeah. Give me the drugs. Yeah, this is like fucking I mean, yes, Ahuka, let's go. Game. Yeah. So yeah. she hands one of you the pipe and invites you to smoke as you kind of, you know, take in the the fumes. Like last time you start to, you know, the colors start to kind of go all interesting as she talks about like pull the energy from the earth through your chakras. I love wow. this shit. And just kind of does the whole thing and you all drift off into the same sort of spiritual journey that she is trying to <laughs> give you peace so, and love <laughs> peace and love so yeah um i'm going to say arthur and alex if you could just roll me a d20. For what? Hey, okay. I'm so Definitely curious. Things. Because <laughs> reasons. Because reasons. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Damn it. Going on this smoke trip is how we figured out where Lark's soul was trapped last time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's and like. what are we trying to find out this time? They're just doing Mudla it for funsies. Always has good shit. Yeah, well, I wanted a bath, so. I got well, it. done with me, stuff. bro. Sorry, Don't I had to get to my dice. Okay. <laughs> Um, I got 19. All right. This is just a straight D20? Yep, just a straight D20. Five. Five. Okay. So, Alex, you, as the colors begin to change, you feel a floaty sensation. You feel the wind in your hair, and then you smell the sea. You are flying, arms stretched out through the air. As you realize your feet are dangling just above the surface of a turquoise, clear, shallow water of an ocean. You occasionally dip your feet down into it and feel the cool water crash against your toes and the cool breeze in the warm air as you pass by tropical islands as you fly. You are flanked by beautiful parrots of a variety of different colors and dolphins swim underneath your feet, occasionally leaping out, glittering and absolutely and utterly beautiful. And that is what you experience. Hell fucking yeah. (laughs) Arthur, you once again find yourself You find yourself in a, it's not quite a jungle, but it's also not quite a building either. It is beautiful plant life crawling up columns with beautiful latticework and patterns. Curtains hang in archways on a colonnade and a breeze blows through them as emerald green tigers walk back and forth as you walk down this long hallway, flowers opening as you pass. It's very calming and very relaxing. One of the tigers looks up at you and just looks at you. There is a sense of comfort in its eyes as it just almost nods and keeps on walking and you continue entirely unharmed. Mm-hmm. And that is what you experience. Lark, as you drift off, you find yes. yourself flying through the very familiar dark forests of the lands you grew up in the garden and the woods surrounding it. And then you see a very familiar figure peeking out from behind a tree. It's rumor covered in shadow as they are wont to do with only red eyes blinking 
rumor? Oh, I'm surprised it worked. I'm going to beeline straight to them and just be like, sibling! And he definitely- I'm going to try tackling them in midair. Uh, yeah, you go cartwheeling through the air before you let go. Um, and he kind of floats there for a second. It, it's so nice to see you. I was trying to find my way in, into your dreams. But it was a bit harder than I thought it would be. Yes, I, I mean, I don't know if I'm dreaming right now per se. I think I'm high on mortal drugs. Isn't that hilarious? Oh, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Well, I heard you got invited to the Waltz of Shadows. Oh, I did, darling. Well, I um, got invited as well. I'll be showing up and I think Prank is also coming. Um, of course, she will be with um, her son. As she's wont to do. Oh, have you slipped into the other one's dreams yet? I have visited Prank in... Um, her dreams, I have, but um, I did hear about uh, the birth of panic. Yes, have you? I've I've been in panic's dreams, or her waking. Of you haven't yet. No, I've been having so much trouble trying to find my way into her head. Neither I or Prank can find her. She's. Missing. Oh, I know exactly where she is, darling. And it's not particularly good or bad, but it's worrisome, I suppose. <sighs> oh, where, where is she? Well, I don't know an exact anymore, but Let's just say my lady's keeping her under tight watch right now and leave it at that, shall we? Well, that would make a lot of sense. Mm. I don't know. I, I just, I guess I just feel something changing around us. It's in the soil, it's in the, the flowers, it's, I, I don't know what it is, but things are changing. Hmm. I'm just gonna like hold their hands real quick and be like, it'll be okay, Rumor. When you, Prank, and I are back together, everything will be fine, don't worry, don't worry. I'm, I'm sure. I, I'm just, you know, with our new sibling and all, and, well, not all change is bad. Perhaps this, this won't be bad. Perhaps it will be perfectly fine. Prank will have an idea. She always has the best of them. She does. Oh, I found out who our birth, well, the corpse was. Did I tell, have you found that out yet? No, I haven't. We were born from some dead mortal king, the one who founded the shithole nation I'm trapped in. Oh, interesting. Mm. They're not worshipping me as a god king yet, though. Mm. Mortals. Well, mortals are a little stuck in their ways sometimes. Mm. But yes. It's splendid news to hear that you and Prank will be at the waltz, though. It's it's coming up soon, isn't it? Yes, very, very soon. Oh, I've... Mm. Mm. How long has it been since the three of us have been together? I don't know. It's hard to tell. I've been in various kingdoms, but... 
perhaps maybe 50 years. Mm. Oh, yeah, that sounds about right now that I think about it. Hmm, time, it's a funny thing. Yes, yes it is. Now darling, have you heard anything particularly juicy that will help us ready for the waltz? Um, the only thing that I've heard is that she's invited two other guests that haven't been to the waltz before. Uh, all I know is, I, I don't know their names, but one is, they're both, I think they're both demons. One has to do with mushrooms and the other one, slime. I, I don't quite remember their names, but apparently they're, they're coming as well. Oh wait, we, we know, oh, what's her face? Zugged her. Um, we, we, we looked her up. We looked her ass up. Yeah, before. we did. Yeah. I don't know if we yeah, looked up the slime one. Or it's just going to be like, so Zugged Moy's coming? That was the name. Yes. And their, their consort, uh, the, the one made of slime, is coming as well. Um, oh. That's all I know. Mm. Well... It's going to be, I'm bringing a church boy with me. Oh, well, how interesting. I know, I'm wondering if he's going to get himself killed or eaten. Or any combination of both. Perhaps. Admittedly, his bloodline's cursed. Oh yes, the whole mortal plane is in terrible danger right now, Rumor. Oh, that's not good. No, not at all. If they die, what are we to eat? Our realm will crumble. That's why my queen has me out here. Though, I've told, ugh, I can't believe it. The Sealy courts know about this and they're doing shit all to help. Well, it, it does kind of sound like them. Mm. Yes. Impressive. All tea parties and finger sandwiches and not doing anything. That does sound like them. Mm. Oh yes, I grant mortal wishes and they love me. When it comes down to mortals dying, they're not going to lift a finger. No, of yes, course we not. we torture them and torment them and eat them sometimes, but at least we want to keep them alive. Very true. <sighs> oh, also I'm going with some hags. Do you remember, oh God, liquor bomb? Liquor mall. Yeah, liquor mall. Liquor Mall. Her coven's escorting me and my human pets, so. Oh, you'll have to meet them. They're all darling. They're I'm sure annoying. they are. I think I'm going to have to go. I'm sure you still have some time left in whatever drug adult hallucination this is, but um, I'm going to have to go. Be careful, Rumor. I certainly will. I always am. Mm, that you are. And I'm gonna kiss him on the cheek and fly off, I guess. It's almost as if the beat of your wings causes him to just disperse into a cloud of dark dust. And you once again continue flying through your home. Percy. Hello. <laughs> I know that was a bit, but plot relevant things. Speaking of plot relevant things, you find yourself listening to music, very familiar music. You've, you've heard this music before, back in the ballroom of the dark house. Oh. Your eyes fill with golden light as the colors come into focus. And you are back in that ballroom people are dancing. You remember this. This was your second wedding anniversary party. 
you're back to, here to, to good old ed yes oh sweetie <laughs> who is holding out his hand and you reach out and you begin to dance and after a while as you're dancing you look up and it's not edmund you're dancing with it's landon oh you are dancing with landon he's wearing a very beautiful suit but it's landon that you're dancing with this doesn't seem to phase you or at least it doesn't phase you enough to have you react in some way but you two dance together for a while and soon it becomes hard to distinguish them from each other for a moment you see edmund the other moment you see landon edmund landon edmund landon and then you're not dancing with either of them anymore Instead, you are staring into the face of a strange bluish purple creature with an octopoid like face and a black cloak. Oh, does that, does an that do it? <laughs> no, an eye opens on its forehead as it looks at you for a moment, and then suddenly you're not in the ballroom anymore. You're standing on a rough stone floor in darkness. As it stares at you for a moment, its tentacles moving ever so slowly as it stares into your mind and you just hear, well, I guess it's my turn to ask for a deal. Oh, am I, am I back? Am I cognizant? Uh, yes, you are, you are cognizant. However, you are still in this sort of vision. You're aware that you're in this vision. So yes, you can act. All right, I'll kind of like push myself away from this creature very abruptly. <laughs> like, uh, oh, not another one of you. And what is it you want? freedom and trade for great power and blah 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 the whole shtick not necessarily great power just perhaps just protection you see i know that you've been rejecting the other spirits deals I've heard them plea and beg, but I'm not coming here with pleas for freedom. I'm used to being trapped, but I can give you the ability to shield your mind from what is coming. And as a benefit, he kind of gestures into the darkness and you see yourself sitting on a throne. It's a very plain looking stone throne with both Edmund and Landon kneeling next to it with their heads in your lap as you gently pet their hair. You can have anyone you want. And as a result, Thera's Dune will not be able to destroy your mind. You'll be safe. So you're offering me protection of my mind and the hand of whoever I want in, in, in trade for what? Well, simply to be my voice. I'm, I'm going to sure need some more specifics. Aware. I'm sure you are aware of my particular children and he gestures once again and in the darkness you see Dorothea and Wolfgang standing in the darkness as they hold the weird little squidling babies 
that they're oh. feeding, one of whom is floating near Dorothea's feet as blocks stack themselves. And they seem to be cooing over them like they're human children. So those are yours. As are all mind flayers. And what, what would your name be? Dern, the first mind flayer. That's D-Y-R-R-N. Okay. D-U-Y-R-R-N. I'm writing that down. Yep. So, uh, you want me to be your voice? Can, can we get into some details of what that means? Well, we would become one being. Hmm. So I'm going to have to stop you right there. Uh, that's just going to be a hard no. Um, I like my being kind of as it is. And uh, I'm, not really, I'm not really willing to share at the moment. Um, so that's going to be a hard pass, my guy. That's unfortunate. We may not be free, but we can still hear the motion of the universe, the music of the spheres, so to speak. Things have changed. The great beholder has taken another step on their journey and has gained a warlock. Therizdun's return is closer than ever now. But go on. Enjoy your little dream. Wait, and isn't my flicks. sister the Great Beholder? Yes. Is and he she... flicks his tentacles, and you are ejected <laughs> out of this vision back into dancing with Edmund. Or is it Landon? Or Edmund? Or Landon? And we'll say that the night winds to its eventual conclusion before you wake up from your vision. And now all of you have woken up. We'll say it's been about 45 minutes. You are all still a bit dizzy and a bit giddy from the drugs, but you remember these visions clearly as if they actually happened. And you see Ludla kind of, ah, oh my God, wasn't that like so cool? No. Oh, it felt so great. Yep. Oh, that was fantastic for me. That was absolutely I feel amazing. pretty fantastic. I would love to go again. I love this. Oh my god. I go in the room and I'm like, what I miss? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You missed the whole session. Well, you can have fun if you want, but I can't give you any more. You might like totally vom. Oh. Okay. Do you guys have okay. any food in here? No, but I think they have like totally delicious grapes up at the front desk. Do they have any smoothies? I could really go for a smoothie or a juice. Honestly, um, I was just hoping that they would lay some type of food in the establishment and then I get high too. Well, I accidentally high while I eat. They don't seem to have any laced food, but they do have a little bit of like, almost like kind of a mini little fruit bar. Um, they don't exactly have smoothie technology, but you can get like right. orange juice or grape juice or some kind of melon juice if you want. Yay, it's a juice bar. <laughs> All right, let me get me some. Hell yeah. So Lark's just going to be like, so I don't know about you fuckers, but, oh no, wait, I sound like Arthur now. Ugh. Oh, <laughs> God, maybe it was a nightmare. Oh, God. Um, okay. I ran into one of my siblings in my dream, and I heard quite an interesting development. Ooh, dish, oh, dish, what's the tea? Oh, the, the, the fungus queen and the slime lord are going to be at the Waltz of Shadows, too. And they've never been invited before. How Pretty delightful. Very selective of who comes to it and who doesn't. That's some pipe and tea. Extremely calculated, so I wonder what she's got planned. 
Well, I mean, weren't they the ones who lost their own planes to Thera's Doom? Mm, is uh, above game? Is that right? I don't remember. Yes, I believe so. Oh, okay. Yes, we we did like the library the three, James. Who you could piece this. together yeah. that the other one is Jubilex. So Jubilex and Zugdmoy actually shared a planet in the far ah. realm that was then destroyed by Theris Dun. They fled to the abyss and became demons. Ah, right. Okay. And they are now getting invited to the Waltz of Shadows. So the response from Arthur would be yes, and one would imagine that that makes them desperate. And desperate people are willing to do just about anything. And I mean, they allied themselves with the Abyssal Pit, darling. I think desperation's a bit beyond what they are at this point. I just think it's eerily convenient that all of these problems with far realm dwelling abominations are cropping up and now two demon lords that were just, I don't know. My lady moves in mysterious ways is all I'm going to hypothesize. Indeed. Well, so that was lovely. Anybody uh, have anything else they want to do here? Um, we can leave, I think. Uh, I, have, you... I have some... Percy, I guess as, right? as we're like packing up, per Percy's definitely been like acting weird and he looks a little pale. Um, I met another aberration, I think. Uh, this one called itself did. Dern, the, the, the first mind flayer. Um, does Percy even know what a mind flayer is? <laughs> yeah, we, we killed one. Oh, we did. Yeah. Cool. Plus, Didn't also, you? all the we saw the bait, yeah, because that's how I got the whip. Oh, no, that was a displacer beast. Uh, display oh, no, that was a displacer display beast. Yeah, right. we, we did not beast. fought that's a mind right. flayer. No, you're right. I no, think you would it. know because we did you discover had the, the notes baby on the squidlings. Things. Yeah, the little baby. Yeah, things. cool. So, so it, it's it's apparently the the parents of those little squid things that my ancestors made. A uh, standard deal for power, blah, blah, blah. This time he kind of put a sexy spin on it for some reason. Not sure what that was about. Oh. Um, but, you know, lie. wanted to control my body and whatnot. I said, no. Um, and I'm sure he... that's the last we're going to hear about that. Mm. I mean, how many yeah. people want to control your body at this point? Mm. He, he just said a lot of unsettling things and I think I, I need to go talk to my family. <laughs> I, 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 even though we don't know, I do love that Percy's implied to be so desperate for attention, he sleeps with someone once and starts having wedding dreams about them. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just happy that Percy's decided to share the uh, machinations of his inner mind when they're impactful on the entire well-being of the planet. But, you know. I'm just happy that they didn't come at me. So thank you for being the one that has all these dreams. I can just fly. It's great. I wonder if we yeah. killed Percy, would you inherit all the badness then? <laughs> don't you dare. Okay, new, new job. Making sure Percy lives because I don't want to deal with this bullshit. <laughs> Not that I'd ever kill you, Percy. Just. I mean, I think oh. we were trying to keep ourselves alive either way. I mean... Right. Yeah. No offense to all... Alex, but Percy's a little bit more fresh. So, I mean, I can understand why he's like the chosen <laughs> one or whatever. Oh, 1000%. And I don't want to deal with that shit. Percy can deal with it. I'm just having fun. <laughs> but also, let's face it. Okay. We can all agree here. We can all agree here. World in my hands. Bye bye, world. Yeah, bye -bye not world. a good look. Agree. World isn't even, is the world even in Percy's hands so much as it's in his sister's? Yeah, oh, no, which again, and thank God somebody else in this family is actually running shit because I would fail miserably. <sighs> just gonna, just gonna bring up the whole Percy's sister thing again in case we were feeling like revisiting how we wanted to handle that situation. Well, we're not killing her, so that's all right. That still stands. Okay. So just checking. That idea. 
I, well, I was just checking. I didn't know if you changed your mind. No, no, nothing in the recent days has made me change my mind about killing my sister. Well, okay, fine. I don't know how the inside of your brain works. Percy! How about now? Uh, shockingly, no, Rarick. That is shocking. Um, at any rate, we should probably rest because if the telepathic messages that Percy and I received are to be trusted, then we've got we've got some things to handle tomorrow. Yeah, we should we should go home. Yeah. Well, so you yeah. all head back. To I, I want to corner Bella the second I see her. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's probably in the dining room. While nobody else can see them, you definitely see her dozen cats floating in the air around her as she's helping set the dinner table. And you come through the door. Hey, you're back. How <laughs> was everything? Um, it was fine and then i kind of i'm gonna do a sending spell and like <laughs> bedroom now <laughs> as you attempt as you're about to do that you hear dern once again whisper in your ear how about i take it from here just a little favor and you no. instead <laughs> cast the message cantrip and she kind of looks at you a little weird. No, okay, yep, yep. And she kind of shoes you upstairs. So you now have the message cantrip. However, when you cast it, some one of the little entities in your head is the one that delivers the message, not you. <laughs> that is That's part of fun. your dark curse that is now unfolding a little more. They're handing okay. out like free samples. That's what <laughs> you got a free sample yeah. tray of you could, here's power. a taste of what you could be getting. <laughs> um yeah, so yeah so she we'll, goes into we'll her go room. She kind of pushes oh, you yes, into yes, her yes, room, yes. shuts the door. The cats are still there. They kind of actually all float through the wall. Um her room is still a mess. The fabric, there's fabric everywhere. There's mannequins everywhere. Her sewing machine takes up like a huge portion of the room. It's just filled. There's like probably five square feet of actual movable space in her room at all given times. You are still not sure how she sleeps in her bed. Um, as she goes, okay, so um, one of the entities in your head told me that you needed to talk to me. What's going on? Okay, first of all, still figuring out what that's about, but um, you have a warlock? What? what? You didn't know? I, I mean, I guess I, I just met a, another entity thing. I don't know, but it said that you have a warlock. Is that, is that ringing any bells for you? <laughs> No, I'm not even quite entirely sure what a warlock is. I'm barely even sure what I am. It, it, I mean, as far as I know, it's just like a, a person you're giving magic to. This is, you don't have anyone like that? No. Why, uh, okay. why would I? How would I even go about I, I that? I don't know. I just got a weird magic squid telling me that you're giving magic to people. I don't... So you trust the magic squid in your head? Well, I thought I would ask. I mean, maybe it was something unintentional. Maybe you're just like a, I don't know, subconsciously giving people magical abilities. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Um, okay, well, that's weird. <laughs> that's weird, yeah, right? <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is pretty weird. So don't don't do that, I guess. <laughs> don't it, I don't, don't even know make a what I did or how I did it. If I even did it, that thing could be lying to you. I mean, yeah. 
I just feel like it's weird that it would just appear to me and and make up a lie about that. That it's like a weird thing to do, even for like a unknowable squid monster. Like I said, you trust the squid monster. Can I make an insight check? Yes, you certainly may. <laughs> That's really good. That's a twenty six. Yeah, she's completely confused. She does not know what you're okay. talking about. All right. Um, well, if if anything like that comes up, um, let me know. I certainly will. I mean, you've been, you all have kind of been keeping everything under wraps, but I mean, fine. Let, let's just eat dinner and deal with this tomorrow. Yeah. And you all leave and head back downstairs where you all continue setting up dinner and you all have a lovely dinner before heading off to bed, assumedly. Unless any of you would like to role play something before. While Percy's away with his sister, I'm going to see if I can get Daddy Krutzwald alone just to see how our business venture is going. Ah, yes. Um, yeah, so you kind of suggest that you need to talk and he heads back to his office with you. Well, I don't exactly have any interested buyers at the moment. Um, the best is I'm working on uh, maybe perhaps the Alchemy Guild would want some shipments of it to um, uh, grow it and use it as potion ingredients. Oh, I hear um, tell it can be quite a powerful potion reagent if you harvest it properly. I, I would assume so. And in their hands, I'm sure they can make all kinds of helpful potions. So I am currently working on getting uh, some of my contacts in there. Um, it seems that a lot of some of the local gardening societies aren't exactly thrilled about what the flower looks like. Um, but the Alchemical Guild seems to okay. take to it. It's a perfectly beautiful flower, come now. In its own way, I'm sure, but it, it's not aesthetic enough for the uh, gardening societies. But the Alchemy Guild will definitely have a good research session with it to see what all they can do. Um, so I'm currently working on that, but it's a bit slow going. Um, but otherwise, I think we're doing quite well. Glad to hear it. Just, we just need to get as many of these out there as we can with, before what's coming might come. Really, it's a favor to whoever winds up with one. That's somewhat ominous, but I'm just going to simply um, pretend I didn't hear that. No, don't worry, your precious. What's, what's Daddy Krutzwald's name again? Howard. 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 Howard, darling, don't worry your precious little head over it. And remember, don't tell Percy or your wife. They're so meddlesome sometimes when it comes to business ventures. Am I right? Yes. Yes, they are. It'll be our little secret. And he kind of nods and you all head back into the kitchen. And presumably a couple of moments later, Percy and Bella come downstairs. And yeah, unless any of you have anything specific that you'd like to do, you all have a lovely dinner and you have a lovely long rest. And that is where we are going to end the episode. So everyone come back next week to find out what exactly is going on and what is happening with Brennan. So you'll see us next week and I will see you all in about five minutes.